Happy Easterween creeps! For anybody not in the know, Easterween and Creepster are the Halloweenified versions of Easter where alternative folks like myself put bat wings on the Easter bunny and create peeps parodies of our favorite horror films. For this video, I'm going to be making three Easterween decor DIYs, one of which will be a garland inspired by one of my favorite book series as a kid, Benicula. Those decoupage eggs that everyone tends to make this time of year, but with a little goth flair. The little goth flare, the little goth flare, and transforming a rabbit statue into a jackalope with some epoxy sculpts. As per usual, the tool and supply list will be located in the video description. And with that said, welcome to the channel, the place to come for spooky DIY home and lifestyle content all year long. Let's go creepster decor supply shopping. <laughs> To be able to get all the supplies I had in mind for these projects, I had to go to both Joanne and Home Goods. Luckily, though, I was able to find what I needed and even had a good reserve chuckle at the punny socks in Joanne's queue. If you've been around the channel for a minute, you know that I love the Montana Gold spray paint and specifically Shock Black. Unfortunately, they didn't have Shock Black in the gold can at the supplier that I go to, so I went with the black can, which worked out well too. I knew that this project had the potential to be quite messy, so I cut up some paper bags to lay them out flat and get better coverage over my work surface. I found these cute colorful napkin sets at Home Goods. I went with two different prints so that my eggs had some variety. To prepare my napkins for decoupaging, I first peeled apart the napkin layers and then tore apart four napkins in each print into smaller pieces. The thickness for these napkins was no joke and kind of reminded me a little of the material used for reusable shopping bags. After the monotony of napkin tearing setting in and I found myself daydreaming of tearing up junk mail that companies insist on sending me despite signing up for paperless, it was time for decoupaging. To do this, I first used a foam brush to apply a layer of Mod Podge to then cover this area with napkin bits. After the napkins were smoothed over the egg surface, I then went in with another layer of Mod Podge over top to seal the surface. One inexpensive technique that I found for creating a holder for while the decoupage dries on the eggs is to create an inverted tripod with toothpicks in styrofoam. This method worked great and was super easy to do. To make the cameos for the eggs and the antlers and rosettes for the jackalope, I used one of my new favorite mediums, Epoxy Sculpt. Epoxy Sculpt is a two-part clay that you mix together in equal parts, has a working time of two to three hours, and hardens in 24 hours with no baking necessary. purchased these silicone molds from a seller on Etsy a real long time ago and have used them for sculpty clay but have never tried this technique with epoxy sculpt.
I had planned to use two different cameo designs for the sculpts, but would ultimately decide to go with the skeleton lady only. Luckily though, I found that after I allowed the clay to harden and maybe even cool down a little inside the mold, the clay came out a whole lot more defined and maintained its shape better. To remove any extra clay around the sculpt edges, I just used a clay tool to cut this away. I went back and forth trying to decide upon the best method to sculpt the jackalope horns. One method that I thought of was to glue wires to the top of the rabbit's head and sculpt the horns over the wires. Truthfully, this way probably would have looked more realistic, but I decided to go with sculpting them on a flat surface, making sure to peel the tin foil away from the back before the horns completely cured. To get the reference image for my Banicula garland, I went to Pixel and selected a couple bunny photos that had body positions that I wanted and then placed them into Illustrator where I drew out my outline and then made revisions to the silhouette and ears. I then drew up some distinguishable fur patches using images I found online of Benicula. To get the most efficient use of my cardstock, I arranged my cutouts inside the dimensions of 8 and half by 11, then with all the vectors selected of each color grouping independently, I clicked the outline pathfinder tool, then went to compound path, and then make. I then imported my SVG files into Cricut Design Space and went through the prompts to cut my die cuts, selecting the medium cardstock setting.
Instead of cutting out little eyes to then glue onto my rabbit die cuts, I opted to cut eye holes out of the white die cut pieces and then tape red half inch squares behind the eye holes. To make the back leg crease stand out more, I made the last minute decision to back my white die cuts with gray die cuts. Tweezers would have come in handy for gluing on these super teeny black fur patches onto Benicula's head, but I fumbled my way through these steps even with my sometimes less than agile fingertips. With the black fur patches glued in place, I then added a little 3D element by hot gluing a white pom-pom to Benicula as the tail. I then took a hole punch to Benicula's back to make hanging holes. And at that moment I realized I forgot Benicula's vampire teeth, so I cut teeny triangles a half inch in length and then carefully taped them to Benicula's gray side. With all my Benicula's assembles, I then got to make my garland. I began by pre-cutting my baker's twine to 60 inches and making a hanging loop at one end. Using a sewing needle, ideally with a larger eye, and my rubber jar opener for ants, I threaded the twine through my first felted ball and then used what I found out to be a girth hitch knot to attach each Benicula to my garland, alternating between felted ball and Benicula die cut. Using a ruler and a lot of patience, I tried to space my felted balls and Benicula die cuts approximately two inches apart. Once my epoxy sculpts had completely cured, it was then time for painting and then gluing them to my decoupage eggs. I played around with paint colors and even considered using some trims that I had as embellishment, but ultimately decided to do without and match my cameo paint colors to the background colors of the napkins. I wanted my cameos to appear like they were embedded in the eggs. To do this, I traced the cameo's outline on the egg and then used a craft knife to shave down that area to make it flat. Once flattened, I could then use hot glue to adhere the cameo over this area. Using acrylic gold paint, I painted my jackalope horns and then hot glued them to the rabbit's ears. The rosettes that I had sculpted I had intended to use on the black teacups that I had painted, but thought that they looked super cute as a flower necklace on the jackalope, so I went with this option instead.
what a marathon of a project spread. My hope is that you saw a project or two or possibly three that you want to recreate yourself or you saw a technique that inspired you to get creative. After looking at the analytics, it appears that 40% of the viewers for this channel aren't subscribed. So if you fall into this category, be sure to subscribe so that you get creepy craft content on your homepage every other week. If you have been here for a minute, thank you as always for continuing to show up and watch and comment and like and share and for watching till the end. Now let's see those final shots.